Dallas, Texas, November 22nd, 1963. Tens of thousands line the downtown streets, packed 10 and 20 deep, to catch sight of the American president, John F. Kennedy, and First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy. The usually shy Mrs. Kennedy has embraced the crowds during this trip to Texas, leaving the president in a buoyant mood. Aboard the Secret Service car trailing the presidential limousine is special agent in charge of Mrs. Kennedy's detail, Clinton J. Hill. Since becoming an agent for President Eisenhower, the former Army counterintelligence officer has seen parades like these around the world, and they are always tense moments for the Secret Service. On this trip, President Kennedy has requested that agents stay away from the presidential limousine unless absolutely necessary. He wants no barrier between him and the citizens of Dallas. Agent Hill tries to oblige, only riding on the limousine when crowds are thick. From his car, he sees the president grin and speak to his wife, who responds with a smile and a nod. Over the last three years, Clint Hill has grown fond of President and Mrs. Kennedy, and they of him. After working on Eisenhower's detail, he first saw his post with Mrs. Kennedy as a demotion, but immediately he was won over by her grace and the president's charm. He was pulled into the famed Kennedy family football games and was on board the presidential yacht Sequoia for the president's 46th birthday party in May 1963, where the champagne flowed and nobody wanted the night to end. The trip to Texas marked the first time Mrs. Kennedy accompanied her husband on a political trip during his presidency. Young John Jr. had ridden on the helicopter from the White House to Andrews Air Force Base, but as his parents boarded Air Force One to depart, he burst into tears. Heartbroken, Agent Hill told him goodbye and promised they would be home in a few days, just in time for his third birthday. Standing firm on the running board of the Secret Service car, Agent Hill's eyes scan a small crowd of people in a grassy area as the motorcade turns left. It passes a seven-story red brick building on the right, its name carved in stone above the door. Texas School Book Depository. At the sound of the first shot, Agent Hill turns to see the president grab his throat. Without a moment's delay, he leaps from his vehicle and races towards the president. He doesn't hear the second shot fired from above and has nearly reached the limousine when a third rings out, striking the president directly. A terrified Mrs. Kennedy begins to climb out of the car as Agent Hill pulls himself aboard. He pushes her back into her seat, covering her and the president, shielding them from the fourth shot that never came. Racing at more than 80 miles an hour, President Kennedy is rushed to the hospital. Shortly after arriving, Agent Hill briefs the White House when the Attorney General, the President's brother, Robert F. Kennedy, joins the line. How bad is it, he asks. It's as bad as it can get, is all Agent Hill can summon as the line goes silent. John F. Kennedy died at 1 p.m. local time, November 22, 1963. Hours later, the president's body now aboard Air Force One, Agent Hill receives a message that Mrs. Kennedy would like to see him. He finds her in the rear of the plane, near the casket, her face streaked with tears and still covered in her husband's blood. In the worst moments of her life, she takes his hand and asks, what's going to happen to you now, Mr. Hill? He is overwhelmed by her grace. Shortly after, Lyndon Baines Johnson is sworn in as the 36th president of the United States. In the ensuing days, America mourned its fallen president, and the Kennedy family mourned their fallen brother, father, and husband. And on duty at their side, Clint Hill silently mourned with them. Near midnight, November 25th, 1963, after the president had been buried and the eternal flame had been lit, Agent Hill escorted Jackie and Bobby back to the president's gravesite, where they would offer a quiet, final farewell. Clint Hill would remain on duty, leading Mrs. Kennedy's detail, before being called back to the White House to serve President Johnson in 1964. Clint Hill rose through the ranks of the Secret Service, and in 1973 was asked to interview to become director. It was an honor he had to decline. The pain of November 22, 1963 had taken its toll. At the time, post-traumatic stress had no name, and so the guilt was buried, the pain numbed by an evening scotch. For nearly 50 years, Clint Hill was haunted by the memories of that day, unable to admit to himself what history already knew, that in one of the worst moments in American history, 
one man had the courage to act, to give everything he had, including his life, to protect the lives of the President and the First Lady. In the weeks to follow the assassination of President Kennedy, Agent Hill was given a handwritten note on White House stationery. It read, to Clint Hill, who did more than anyone to make my life with the President happy, and who guarded and protected him until the very end, how can I thank you, Jacqueline Kennedy? <laughs>